earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Age to age he stands, and time is in his hands, beginning and the end. God is great. Amen. Oh, I just love worshiping with you folks. You know, our, our, our journey in life is to celebrate Jesus and celebrate him in a fashion that, that uh, includes our change, our transformation, both heart, soul, mind, and strength. But in that process, radiating his presence so that others are drawn to know how great our God is and, and the awesome power and the blessing that we have. It is a day to celebrate the Lord. It is a day to, to celebrate His power and His presence in our life. So this morning as we come together and we hear God's Word, celebrate the joy of believing. Celebrate the joy of, of God's Word and His His blessing in our life for believing and celebrate the scripture that God puts before us so that our way and our wandering will guide us to choose him will guide us to be in communion with him I want to begin in the book of or as we begin I want to stop first and I'll, I'll do the video before we do the scripture the video um, talks about uh, the release and the freedom that comes when you know that your belief system is rooted in the truth of God's Word and the presence in His Spirit. It's simply just called, I believe. 
in Jesus. I believe in Jesus, the firstborn of all creation, the prelude to Adam, the author of Eden, by all, in all, through all, Genesis reason, the husband of the newborn bride. I believe earth is one of his love's brightest beacons. I believe in Jesus, the infant king, ruler of the heavens, the universe's spring, and yet he took the frailest of forms, the weakest of things, for our mighty God was not too proud for the stable and trough of Bethlehem's sting. I believe in Jesus, the forgiver of men. Since man would not come to God, God came to them. Though we spit in his face through our arrogance and sin, holiness still became flesh so that it might be forgiven. I believe in Jesus, the perfection of the law, for creation was doomed by the requirements it scrolled. But he came not to abolish correction, but succeed where we did fall. And then he wrote a new law on our hearts, love God and love all. I believe in Jesus, the horribly betrayed. Unknown by the world he himself had made, handed over to death by a follower to whom some silver was paid, disowned by a friend three times in one day. I believe in Jesus, the ever turning cheek, no sword in his hand. He took the way of the weak, redefined strength as beaten and meek when men struck him on his back. Only forgiveness did he speak. I believe in Jesus, the servant on the cross. To save the lives of the sinful, he considered his own life lost. Endured the torture of men. Whips and nails in his flesh were embossed. Received the righteous wrath of God, the judge bearing our judgment the ultimate cost. I believe in Jesus and that flesh in the tomb. You see, he bore the end of a normal human as he was born of a human's womb. He died a criminal's death and was buried in some other man's room. God, the Son, lay dead, the lifeless. But I still believe in Jesus and the body of his resurrection. For he redefined life in death's final rejection as he showed holes in hands to over 500 of his own selection so that humanity would not be able to raise an objection to the fact that Jesus Christ is God the Son and has made the ultimate connection. So I believe in Jesus and the commissioning of his ascension. For he ascended to God's right hand forever in intercession, leaving his truth in the hands of a few, those first to be called his Christians. His hands and feet are now the church, his boundless reconciling expression. This is our heritage. They are our relatives. And this, this is our confession. We believe in Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection.
Hmm. There's a sermon there, amen. <laughs> For he is risen. Yes, amen and hallelujah. <laughs> that just got my goosebumps, and that's about the fourth time I've watched it in three days. I want to begin in the book of 1 John in chapter 5. And, and the scripture here is telling us the, the reward, the blessing, the gift for following Jesus and not the way of the world. Since we believe in human testimony, surely we can believe in the greater testimony that comes from God. And for God has testified about His Son. For all who believe in the Son of God know in their hearts that this testimony is true. And those who don't believe this are actually calling God a liar. Because they don't believe what God has testified about His Son. And this is what God has testified. He has given us eternal life. And this life is in His Son. Whoever has the Son has life. And whoever does not have God's Son does not have life. For I have written this unto you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know you have eternal life. This is the glorious blessing of believing in Jesus. Of knowing in your heart, soul, mind, and strength that He is risen and He is alive. And knowing that wherever this world takes you, He will accompany you in that journey, never leaving us or forsaking us. In the book of John, Jesus proves His love once again for the believers in His prayer of believers, found in John 17. He says, For I have revealed to you the ones you gave me from this world, for they were always yours, yet you gave them to me, and they have kept our word. Now they know that everything I have is a gift from you, Father. For I have passed on to them the message that you gave me. And they have accepted it and know that I came from you and they believe that you sent me. My prayer is not for the world, but for those you have given me, Lord, because they belong to you. For all who are mine belong to you and you have given them to me, so they bring me great glory. But now I am departing from the world, and they are staying in this world, Father. So I am coming to You, Holy Father, for You have given me Your name. Protect them by the power of Your name so that they will be united just as we are. During my time here, Lord, I protected them by the power of the name You gave me. I guarded them so that they would not be lost except the one who was headed for destruction, as the Scriptures foretold. But now, Father, I am coming to You. I told them many things while I was with them in this world so that they would be filled with My joy. I have given them Your Word, and the world hates them because they do not belong to this world just as I do not belong to this world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. They do not belong to this world any more than I do. Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is the truth. Just as you sent me into the world, I am sending them into the world. And I give myself as a holy sacrifice for them so that they can be made holy by your truth. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Jesus knew His life mission was to come to us and give us the avenue, give us the pathway, open the door so that we could be forever linked and united and joined in Him and His Father. 
He knew that he must suffer, that he must die, and he must be raised again for the world to have any chance of believing. Because history had proved we struggled with believing. But he most of all prayed for those he loved. Those who left everything to follow Him. Those who would give everything so that others would know of His name and know in whom He is. He continued in John 17 to pray for the future. And this is where I believe we come in. For I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in Me. It's you and I, my friends. I pray that they will all be one just as you and I are one. As you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me so that they may be one as we are one. For I am in them and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them just as you love me. Father, I want these whom you have given me to be with me where I am. Then they can see all the glory you gave me because you loved me even before the world began. O righteous Father, The world doesn't know you, but I do. And these disciples know you have sent me. I have revealed you unto them. And I will continue to do so. For then your love for me will be in them, and I will be in them. For all who believe in me will be filled in me and I in them. What a gracious, loving Father. Amen? Think of what what Jesus was asking when He said this prayer, these prayers. Not only was His prayer for His disciples and whom He loved and those socially uh, connected to that group, but also for those who were yet to come. The church of 2021 and beyond. The men and the women and children who would dare to stand on the promises of God's Word. To live a life worthy of God's praise. To praise God in the good times and in bad. To rely on His Spirit when we are weak when we are broken, when we are sad. I believe in Jesus Christ because He saved a wretch like me. They know me because I have revealed myself to them. His love for us is real because He saves. Because He heals. Because He restores. And because He is Lord. Now more than ever, in this season, in this decade of darkness, lies, deceit, hate, Anger, war, lust, greed, power. The truth needs to be seen. We are the truth. The lamp upon a hill that is the hope for not only this generation, but the one yet to come. And it is It is our greatest responsibility to live our faith out loud. 
to guide. The Lord has guided us through COVID, amen? We're still here. Today, tomorrow, and forever. It, we're here because God's love has no end. We're here because Jesus' words, remember this, I will be with you until the end of ages. The end of ages being at that great moment where he returns and makes himself and the world known and Satan is truly defeated. He's at work that Satan is. He's at work. We are the hope for the lost world. To live in the light. To love one another. Oh, how, how this world has degraded the word love. And put so many restrictions on it. You can only love me if. There is no if in this word. There is just truth. And to believe in it and to stand upon it and to live it out loud is what the world needs now more than anything. I was, I was gathered with a bunch of young men the other day, um, 20-somethings. You know, they just have an unlimited amount of energy. They don't have any aches and pains. They're watching me lay on this floor and I'm thinking, oh Lord, help me get off this floor without looking like I'm 59. Help me, Lord, stand up without going, oh, or looking for something to pull myself up. And then pizza came because, you know, young boys need to eat. And they're, they're like, like, like flies on a, on, a, on a, I mean, they come around that table and that pizza, and, and the one boy reached in. And he grabbed that first slice of pizza. And I said, oh, the preacher's here. Jesus is with him. We need to pray. <laughs> he dropped that pizza like it was, like it burned a hole in his hand. And he turned around and he says, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I said, hey, no apologies to me. It's the man upstairs that put that delicious pie right there in front of you. And so I prayed. And, and the one fella, he's bigger than me. Josh, he said, you're the weirdest pastor I know. And I said, thank you very much. And he said, you're real. You just tell it like it is. You, I said, that's God's word, buddy. It's real. It tells us the temptation and the pain and the suffering and the anguish that we will all experience here on earth. Amen? But it shows us the way of salvation that frees us for eternity in Jesus Christ. It shows you the problem, but it gives you the solution. And we, Jesus' church, is the solution for the generations to come. We need to love like Christ's prayer for us. Don't put boundaries on it. Don't handcuff it. Set it free so that others will know that we come in His name and are filled with His Spirit. I believe in Jesus. Amen? I believe in Jesus. Amen? I believe in Jesus. Amen? Look how fun this is. Look at this. You know, our doctors are already smiling because we're moving. And our arthritis is saying, what are you doing? What are you doing? But Jesus is sitting there. Man, that's a weird pastor. But he loves me because I love him. He's okay with us being different as long as he's here. 
For I am in them because they are in me. Amen? Amen. Let's conclude our worship with one of the best classic songs ever written, The Old Rugged Cross. stood an old rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame and I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain so cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a that old rugged cross so despised by the world has a wondrous attraction for me for the dear Lamb of God left his glory above to bear it to so I cherish your rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown. In that old rugged cross, stained with blood so divine, a wondrous beauty I see. For twas on that old cross, Jesus suffered and died, to pardon and sanctify me. So I cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the and exchange it someday for a crown to the old rugged cross I will ever be true its shame and reproach gladly bear then he'll call me someday to my home far away where his glory forever I'll share. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I I will cling 
Done, church. Could you hear that? Woo wee! I got goosebumps since I walked in the building this morning. And it's not because I'm cold. Well, hear these words found in the book of Psalms 113. Praise the Lord. Yes, give praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Everywhere. From east is to west, praise the name of the Lord, for the Lord is high above the nations. His glory is higher than the heavens. As we leave today, may we praise the Lord for His love, His Son, our Savior, Jesus, is with us. Amen. Now listen, I need you all back here next Sunday because these young ones that we helped raise for the last seven years need to know we're still with them. All right.